not closing yet, so I, I, I want to say thanks, and I want to say so many things. I'm going to hold that urge. Uh, so we thought, you know, every time we have done, like I said, this is the fourth time we are doing Change the Script, and every time we have gone into the process, we have, as part of the philosophy, always believed that a crux of what you do is the role model, is the role modeling of who you are. And that for us is really at the center of all our work. So every time we design change the script, we ask ourselves, are we pushing the edge? Are we role modeling doing something that we haven't done before? Are we role modeling that we are willing to come into every conference and become vulnerable again and try something which we haven't tried and push our own boundaries? So this has been no different. When we started the design, it's been about four uh, months that we, we spent really thrashing out this design. It's gone to so many places and reached where it is today. And one of the things we said, you know, to push ourselves is to offer to you, to, to, to each one of you who's come here, the approach that we use. What is the dream and dream approach to design, to thinking, be it a program, be, be it a, a workshop, be it this two-day conference? How can, is there some, um, value for you to really understand the approach that we use. So that's what I'm going to use the next 20 minutes that I have uh, to share with you the approach for you to then uh, do what you need to do with it. Uh, it's obviously open and out there for you, for you to take uh, in any way that you would like to integrate it. So the approach, it's called the arc of transformation. And uh, this, the arc of transformation has been adapted from the creative community model that was developed by PYE Global. So PYE Global came and uh, trained us for almost four years, and a bunch of us got trained in facilitation and in this approach, and then we took that and we kind of contextualized it to what we are doing here and into our work. So to just uh, unpack, I think is the word of this conference, to just unpack what is the arc of transformation. So let's start with transformation. What does transform, again, a word that many people use in, in, in the way it applies to you, but the way in we, we use transformation, when I dream a dream when we say transformation. So a very quick story to talk about what is transformation. So there was a young girl, she was about 16 when she came to us, and her father has suddenly run away from home. So she's 16 here, and, and you know, overnight she's become the head of the family. Her mother has only been a daily wage worker the, till then, so she has to take care of her uh, mother and her two siblings. And her mother is just like looking at her to take care, uh, take care of all of them. So that's when she came to the Dream and Dream program. She became part of the Life Skills program. And as she went through the series of the program, including the mentoring program, she learned ways to deal with the crisis. So what did she do? She found a part-time job while she was still going to college. She learned to negotiate with the debtors, so the debtors would turn up at home every day, so she learned to negotiate with the debtors. She learned to take a, make a small income go a really long way. A year after the crisis, she got a promotion. That she almost paid off all the debt. The father came back home, and the mother decided to take him back. And she really had grown. She had grown into herself, and you would think, oh yeah, that's great. That's a story of change, right? That's, that's transformation. But not necessarily. Because a year after that, now the parents are together, they decided to marry her sister off to an influential politician. Right? Somebody she didn't like, he was much older than her, and new crisis. In this case, uh, this, uh, the sister obviously didn't want to marry him, and because she didn't have the skills to deal with that, she just ran away. So the parents then decided to get this girl married to the politician because the invitation cards were printed, the hall was booked, we have to save face, so instead of your sister, we'll get you married. And she was barely 18 at that time. She negotiated with her family. She did not run away from home. She uh, reached out to the sister who had run away to find out if she was okay. She found the empathy in her to do that. Is this the end of the story? Oh, by the way, yeah. And what she realized is she just needs to cross the marriage date, the date that was on the invitation. So she just held strong and said, I just have to go through that date. And the date came and went, and that was when the crisis was averted. Now, 
Is this the end of the story? No. Because life is never like that. Our challenges never go away. And especially when you come from adversity, the challenges only get harder and your ability to deal with them only more compromised. Which is when, when we decided, or when we design our programs, we look at how can we transform the being, we call it the being of a person. And I think what happened with Kavita in this story is that as she went through the programs, what she realized is that she has the inner resilience. She has the courage within herself to, to deal with the problems that come up in her life. That she has the agency, a word that I heard, right? that she has the agency to take on any challenge that life throws at her. So for us, that is the being. When in your being you shift in a way that you can never forget who that, that part of, that person that you become. And for us, that is transformation. What is the being? So a couple of examples from our work with teachers. So this sir, uh, teacher, uh, yeah. So he used to uh, punish this girl every day for six months for coming late. He went through our program and he said, you know, let me ask her why she comes late. And he realized that she doesn't have a clock at home. Because she gets up in the morning and she has to do chores at home by the time she comes, she just doesn't realize that she's running late. That moment for that teacher transformed him so fundamentally, he never punished a child again definitely without listening to what their side of the story was. Another teacher, so uh, without confidence, right, every, gave up every opportunity for growth because she was just so scared of, of owning her, herself. And one day after the training, she just said, you know, let me do this session around uh, what are the challenges faced by girls in rural communities. And the applause she got, she never went back to being not confident again. A teacher, she never thought of herself as cruel. It had never occurred to her that she's cruel. Till one day it hit her that the class that she was managing was bearing the brunt of her frustrations in her personal life. And it hit her that she had been cruel. And she let it go. She transformed in her being. So that's for us the being. When you really shift in a way that you can't go back to who you were. So what is it, right? What is it that helped uh, Kavita? What is it that helped these teachers to really shift their being in such, in, in such a transformative way? And that is where, we, where the arc of transformation comes through. In the program with our young people, in our program with the teachers, this is the approach we use. It's a way for us to, you know, just find, just, just to build more empathy, to be, be more creative, to be more self-reflective, to really find more courageous versions of ourselves. So that's kind of the overall intention of using the arc of transformation. So now I'd like to go into what is the arc of transformation itself, and I'm going to use this conference as kind of a reference for that. Should I pause for questions? Yeah? Okay. Is there any questions so far? Yeah. Because, I mean, what you mentioned, it seems so personal. It seems like something that happens on such a one to one level. Um, and I know this is coming from the organization. I'm, I know this is coming from your own experience in the organization. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how this personal experience, you're being able to transfer? you know, talk about it in a, in a larger setting almost? Yeah, that's exactly, uh, you know, why I'm going to use change the script, in fact, as a reference to, to talk about it. So that's a great segue, so unless there's another question. Yes, Valerie. Thank you. Your, um, your examples are interesting and kind of moving, but they give the impression that transformation is like that. And it's like an event can transform you. Um, like, you know, Sir yeah, Paul on the yeah, road yeah. to Dam no, I Damascene. Hear you. Yeah, I hear you, yeah. Now, maybe you're going to overcome that when you talk about the arc of transformation. Sure. But I think um, for many people, if they are to transform in their being, it's yeah. a process. 
Yeah. And it takes considerable time, and yes, it takes it setbacks, and it takes yes. new experience, and it takes yes. consolidation, yada, yada. So yeah. forgive me if I'm kind of already moving ahead to where no, you're no, at. No, please, but I just yeah. think it's a mistake to think that a single yeah. event, yeah. Um, even if it's a real epiphany and you suddenly yeah. see things quite differently, aren't enough, yes. alas, <laughs> yes. sadly, to no, transform. I, th I think that's a great point, Valerie. You've really uh, brought in a, a, a thing I needed to add to this. Transformation is not instant. This has not happened in an instance. The story of Kavita took about five to six years to unfold. It's not in an instant. And I think that's a very important point, that it shouldn't come across that it's an instant and it can be done uh, easily. Uh, I, mean, I think, I think there is, there's a lot to learn from the failures that you've had in yes. the process of transformation. Yes. A little more about when, when there's a process and if there is a failure. Yes. What were the circumstances and how that sort of failures came out? Sure. So generally, if there's fail, when you're trying something and you fail, then what happens? Yeah. Any last questions? Any last questions before I come to that? So I think, sorry, I should wait. Do you have a question? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to take off uh, from these two points, really. One is that it does not happen in an instant. It is not, uh, it is not a magic wand. Uh, and there is failure. Uh, if, I, if I work with a group of 20, 20 teachers, for example, on, in a very good case, I might say six of them have transformed, like when I've done a really phenomenal job. And so in my statistics itself, so if I start with 20 teachers, it's usually an eight-month program. About 50% of them reach through all the eight days because we say you have to come for every day of that eight day. And in that 50%, I think I have about, I haven't measured it, but I would say about 30 to 40% who transform. So there's more failure than success. However, having said that, the reason why we are offering it here is to, is to uh, not make it seem like it has to be left to chance, that we can actually design for it that whatever the success it is, it does not have to be left to chance. I can design it in a workshop setting. I can design it in a conference setting. I can embed it into a two-day, two-hour workshop with young people. I can embed it into an eight-month program with teachers. So that's kind of the offering uh, of, uh, you know, talking about it. But yes, transformation takes time. What we are offering here is that there is a process to replicate it. So using Change the Script, the arc of transformation, there are four stages to it, really. Uh, I think it's quite simple because I've thought about it so much. It's really four stages. So the first stage, it's typically done in a group, uh, is to really create safety, to create a sense of community, to build a sense of, uh, you know, that we're all in this together. So a way to set goals, a way to arrive at certain agreements, to set certain context for why we're doing this, why we're here. And then building, a, building some personal connections with each other, really understanding where everybody is coming from. The second part is to create a transformatory experience. So the opening, it's a powerful beginning. We call it a powerful beginning. Should really open you up to engaging in a powerful experience, right? You should feel comfortable. You should have, it should have landed in such a way that your guards are down and you're like, okay, I'm willing to take on this experience that is coming my way. So you create a transformatory experience. The third, you make meaning of that experience. So you've had a shift in yourself, and then you kind of give meaning to that. What, what really does that mean? Can I take this back? Is it something, you know, you engage with that, and you give it words, and you make meaning. And finally, you celebrate it. So that it never goes away, you never forget. Now it's called an arc, because once you come on the side of the arc, the assumption or, or, or the philosophy the hypothesis is that you can't go back to being who you are. And that is why it's an art. So if I were to use, change the script as an example, that's why the morning of yesterday was really designed to build one, connections with each other. So I set the context in my opening keynote, and then we did the sociometry, and we asked questions. And the questions were specifically designed so that it's not about who you are, what role you play, why you're here, but at what are the emotions, how do you think, where would you put yourself on, a scale, uh, on an age of 1 to 100? So it was just to build personal connections and to build safety into the space. Then we created the value 
for why to do this, why to come into this. And that's where we positioned Valerie's keynote. We had the youth panel, right? Because you're here, but why do you need to do this? Why open yourself to a transformatory experience? So that's what was the morning about, to create a real compelling and safe space to allow yourself to have a transformatory experience. The afternoon was designed to create that experience. So that's why we started off with having uh, sharing our personal journeys, who we are. We did that silly thing because we said, you know, we haven't done anything silly. So can I let go of my guard even in a physical way? And that's kind of why we did that warm up of the minibus. Uh, and that's after that is when we went into the river of life. Just uh, have, you know, it's a very personal thing really to share about ourselves at that deep level. And then we had Dave really talk about adversity and we really we wanted to position it in a place where people were really ready to listen and accept the young people for who they are and who their stories are. And then we went to do the image theater so that you could really empathize with young people and listen to them from that place of uh, having a powerful experience. So that was the afternoon of yesterday. Uh, we had the night. Uh, so it was designed for to leave us in a place of question and reflection. If, if I were to, uh, uh, you know, put an intention to the energy I wanted at the end of the day. It was just reflection, just these questions, just a sense of, oh my God, am I doing enough? Is there something more for me to think about? Right? So that was the tone or where we wanted to leave it. And then we had the evening uh, uh, music. And then we come into making meaning. So today morning was really about that. Can I make meaning of this? If I do want to create change, if I do want to do this, can I really create meaning of that? And uh, so all the sessions were designed to bring our creativity, to bring that inspiration into the room, to really come into a place of imagination, thinking in a way that hasn't been thought before. And so the morning was curated to create that experience. Uh, and now in the afternoon, we're moving towards closing, and we're gonna have a big bang celebration that I hope all of you are part of, so that we can really celebrate all this work we've done. So that is the arc of transformation and how uh, we've applied it in this conference. Yeah, questions, anything to add? And again, the, to, to come back to the intention of sharing this, is just to, just to make it real that this is codified. This is an approach that we have that is, co that is coded. I'm, I'm giving you this, it's here. And if you want to take that, it's available. That is the only intention right now for me to share about the arc of transformation. And you speak about different time periods. So yes. In the future, one is doing yes. 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 So I can use the same approach. If I'm doing a two hour session with a young person, it might be a football session. I use the same approach an opening, an experience, a meaning, and a closing. When I do it with teachers, over two days I do it, an opening, an experience, a meaning, a closing. Over the eight days, so the program runs over eight days, over a period of about six to eight months. Even then I do that. So the first workshop is, in a way, the opening, the second workshop is the experience, the third workshop is the meaning, and the fourth workshop is the celebration. So it applies every time. So even within every activity that we've done here, at Change the Script, the arc has, has played out. Even within the river of life, we start with the song, which is the opening, then we do the experience of really thinking about our pivotal moments, we make meaning of it, and then we close it. So it's applicable whether it's a two hour, it's two days, or it's eight months. One thing you want to add. So I think uh, the other piece, what was kept in mind was <laughs> <laughs> So the other thing that we, no, I just forgot. The other thing that we kept in mind when we were designing was uh, that there is a personal journey Yeah, and what is that, uh, you know, I was, ha I was getting a few examples, so if I may uh, bring that up, you know, because when I knew I was doing this piece, so I would have loved to take some examples from what we noticed happen, and Pooja, if I can use your example, <laughs> right? And uh, 
So what is transformation again? It doesn't, ha it doesn't have to be big bang, right? That's another piece uh, maybe I should, uh, I should bring light on. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm gonna change the world tomorrow. It just might be like, it's something that you don't forget for life. Right? And I was asking uh, Pooja and she said, and she offered it and I said, you know, I, that's a great example. And she, may I? Yeah. Uh, she said that, you know, one of the things I'm taking away from this conference is that self-care and healing also includes the body. I think I've never really thought about that while I've thought about self-care and healing uh, in an emotional way maybe, but never really thought about it in terms of my body. Right? And I was asking Pooja, do you think you'll ever forget? this insight you've had, and she said, no. And that for me is, is, is transformation. It's something, right? I, I won't call it transformation, but it's something that you don't forget for life. And it could be something like that. Oh, Atishri has, uh, or it could be like what I was asking Paul. And Paul was really talking about, you know, how the conference has been about listening to the voices of young people and using the voice of young people to say what is next, what is next, what is next. Now that for me is like, wow. So those are kind of examples. Yes, Atisha, you have your hand up. So for this process of the arc of transformation, what do you find is like a group size that works? Because it's clearly an intensive yeah. process where even as a facilitator, you're giving a lot yeah. of yourself into that conversation and that yeah. process for that change to happen. So we tried with 70. We didn't think it would work, but it did, I think. <laughs> today, and, uh, today when I thought about it in the morning, I said, it seems like, uh, of course there's failure. I think there is a pers certain percentage of us who might have had a very powerful experience, and some of us who have you know, maybe had a great time, which in itself is okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is the size we have tried at right now. How do you know it works? I mean, like, and this is probably yeah, getting great back question. to the whole, whole section. <laughs> great question. And, 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 and I would just want to preface it with the fact that when you bring a group of people in, you know, there is a lot of positivity that's in the room, yeah. that, that is in the exchanges. And, a, and when you put it under a banner of arc or transformation, there's also the pressure to say, yes, because I, I really believe in it, and I really stand and I up and say I can go through some transformation. <laughs> and this is just, I'm not saying I believe in it, but I'm just saying, um, uh, sure. how, you. Do you, how do you, okay. as, as the architects yes. of this uh, workshop, get a sense of that? So there's two parts to it, I think. Actually, I mis misheard your question. The first part I heard is, can you measure it? Uh, but I think you're really asking if I can make up. I'm gonna give an answer that is true and take it as you will, it's intuition. <laughs> but a lot of the work we do with facilitators is really around building intuition. So the training that we, as facilitators, we go through is primarily around understanding that you're role modeling. So you're holding space and what you hold space for, your role modeling. And the second is to get in touch with your intuition. So in terms of skills, I would say the primary skill to be a facilitator is to have, is to be in touch with your intuition. But yes, we haven't measured it. Although we have in young people. No, I, I, I rephrase, uh, I reframe re it. Uh, we have measured it when we work with young people. We just haven't measured it with adults. Would, would the kind of, just in continuation of Sukhmani's question, with the kind of sharing that begins to happen in a group, the kind of interactions that start to happen, uh, validate your intuition about yeah. whether it's worked or not. So You're answering it. No, no I'm not answering it. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you as a question. I'm, it's a potential answer. Let me put it that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you'll have to say that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> so... To, to follow up on Sukhmani's question, yeah. can it be measured or can, yeah. and yeah. your answer is intuition, right? But intuition based, it's some observation that leads to that intuition yeah. happening, yeah. right? And my question, or uh, I guess a leading question or whatever else you want to call it, is, is the idea that, uh, you know, people, people change in the way they interact with each other, yeah. whether it's in our after school program or whether it's in TDP or wherever, yeah. Yeah. and does that count towards it, like as a facilitator, yes. does that count towards what Absolutely. you're saying? Yeah. 
Absolutely. It's all about behavior change. Right? Ultimately, what are we looking for? Yes, my intuition is telling me, but what I see is behavior change, which is why I can measure it with children. I can specifically measure that there has been a change in the way they manifest the transformation, and I can measure it by measuring the change in their behavior. Sorry? Tell me, the youth image the other. And we do, we also a little bit sensitive about time. Yeah, no, uh, quickly because uh, uh, leading answer to your question. <laughs> Actually today morning also. Yeah. Today morning also. Yeah, so um, the, whether we felt it, right? I think uh, I would safely assume that most of us felt it last evening uh, when the last uh, image was formed. And there was that moment of uh, silence which we all held together. And then we, uh, you know, we had a, sigh and then the group image that was formed by the youth and the adults uh, that should say something about it and even this morning when um, after uh, Pavi's uh, note uh, the feeling you uh, it's, it's, a, it's a group energy that we can feel uh, and I would uh, assume on behalf of you that I think you felt as well so yeah. And the way it manifest was in the, also in the opening warm up where we all just broke into song and dance. Uh, so some voices that I haven't heard, yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so Suchita, uh, one of the points that you mentioned about like, as a result of it, it will always manifest. That's hmm. what you said. Hmm. Uh, our experience has been that sometimes it may or may not manifest, but change may still happen. Sure. Right? Behavior is just a outward yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Indicator expression of, of Yes. So whether the outward expression is there or not, sure. still the change Ab may happen. Absolutely. So this is very close to one of the tools that we have been developing uh, for uh, what we call as the INIS tool. Okay. Uh, so this is much more from the Eastern philosophy and Vedanta and hmm. uh, yogic uh, thought and so on. Okay. So here we actually conceptualize Ainus as uh, the egoity or the hankar, you know, okay. uh, which is much more closer to self-identity. Okay. And we look at it from four different angles where we look at it from a fixed eye to a fluid eye, a narrow eye to a broad eye, affected to an unaffected, and uh, from an experiencer to a witness. Okay. So uh, we have actually developed this type of tool. Okay. We would be, I mean, if you're open, you would be love, we would love to test your teams with that tool. Yeah, absolutely. I know. That's the answer. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great. I do want to say, though, with young people, we do look for behaviors because we are trying to go for that. But with adults, I think uh, we, we can definitely try that. So I think the last... Uh, Sure. Comment or question. So I'm, I'm sort of coming in here from, from a slightly outside perspective. I, I, I don't belong to the education space. I don't belong to the social space. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Satan to, to most of you all. I'm on, I'm on the other side. <laughs> but my observation in this, and I come from a space of, I'm, I'm a lawyer. I, I go into these types of conferences very often, both internationally as well as in the country. The single differentiating factor for me and why, mm. and I've been to social sort of, of conferences as well. To me, what, what stood out is I think that while I did hear that people, in a certain, in a certain sense, the problems of, of the real world, of, of the outside world, I guess at some level apply here as well from, from a competition perspective, from a funding perspective, from some of those things. But the one thing that perhaps is very different to me here is the honesty with which people were willing to put themselves out and say things. Yeah. And I think that's very refreshing, at least for me, yeah. the fact that people are willing to share that. And if, and if yeah. you can get more forums like this, yeah. where people are willing to have honest, yeah. uh, almost difficult conversations yeah. around things, I think you need that, especially yeah. in a space like this, where people are seem to largely be here for the love of, of really wanting to make change. Yeah. Yeah. If this community can really sort of, of come together yeah. like this and, and be more honest and and be yeah. more straightforward and, and share more information yeah. about yeah. these insights because ultimately everything here seems to sort of, of lead to the fact that you want to make a difference with the child. Yes. And the only way you can do that, I think, in the space that all we operate in, in the country and, and the size and the yeah. challenges yeah. is for more people to come together yeah. and work together in, in, and find a way to work together. Yeah. I mean, there may be challenges, but you have to find yeah. tools to overcome those as well. And, yeah. and I think as, as a suggestion, yeah. I think perhaps in future conferences, perhaps how do you find methods to also get people who in some sense are competitive, 
Yeah. But equally, there is a sort of there should be a method and, and a synergy for them to work together. So yeah. if people can, if even two people can leave this conference saying, can we find an opportunity to work yeah. with each other yeah. and create more? I think yeah. that for me would be a, a big sort of. of yeah, I think uh, you're bang on in that. In terms of so, just to take a minute to talk about how Dream and Dream is looking at scale. Uh, is that we did start, yeah, we started this with young people and we said what is the next lever and we said we want to work with teachers. So we didn't take our program, we took the approach to teachers. And today we are in a place of saying, you know, can I really work, use the same approach when I'm in a room with, with a group full of influencers and what will this approach, what will transformation look like in, in a group like this? So yeah, I think we are in the phase where we are playing with this and seeing, we definitely know the old methods have not worked, so we are saying, okay, let's Try this. The worst that will happen is we'll fail. So I think it is tea time. Do, and there are announcements. Should we break for tea? Do you want to hear our last question? Okay. <laughs> See, now I've left the intuition to you. <laughs> I actually have an observation more than a question. I just want to pull out a couple of threads. Uh, I think we talked about um, earlier in the panel, systemic, right? So we hold systemic. And coming out of systemic was this idea of collaboration, right? Yeah. And an act of, weave, uh, act of people working intently. I mean, Ritzon made a brilliant point yeah. about people working intently yeah. to collaborate yeah. and yeah. to weave and to yeah. make collaborations. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you drill that one step further to what this gentleman was saying, yeah is human transformations, right? Yeah. Like the willingness yeah. um, to transform and the willingness to shift. Yeah. Now, if you take that one more further down, then it is at the individual level. It yes. is at the heart set and the mindset yes. level that we're willing to yeah. do this, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think going back to Valerie, I mean, maybe this is incredibly naive and simplistic. I, I, you know, we need the Valerie's of this world to shift and rock and provide the evidence. Yeah. But for systems to change, the heart set and the mindset and this interlinkages need to be weaved and it needs to happen uh, much more intentionally. I think the word that you did not use is you were very intentional, yes, incredibly absolutely. intentional. Absolutely. And that's why you got the outcome. So it was an accidental, it wasn't yeah. airy-fairy, yeah. it wasn't fluid, yeah. it was intentional. So yeah. likewise, if we're able to one, um, have perhaps more stakeholders. I think definitely listening to the young people, we're missing a couple of critical stakeholders here, like universities and yeah. uh, more government yeah. representatives yeah. in their, you know, yeah. in their individual yeah. hats. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then a sense of urgency yeah. around it. So I, yeah. I do think this transformation is big. Thank you. Thank you so much. So on that note, for thank you for my closing statements.